All right, uh, welcome to the uh, Delanca Township Committee meeting, May 17, 2021. This is uh, being held remotely via Zoom remote access, uh, 7 p.m. Uh, on this day. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown? Here. Ms. Fitzpatrick? Here. Ms. Holland? I'm here. I? Yes. Mr. Olat? Here. Mr. Templeton. Here, also present, uh, let's see, uh, it's Mr. Heinhold, our township solicitor, solicitor, Mrs. Lohr, municipal clerk, Mrs. Martin, deputy municipal clerk. Um, let's see, Chief uh, Chief DeSanto. We have Mr. Robin Verso, our township uh, auditor. We have, who did I miss here? We have Beverly Russell, uh, administrative assistant. Uh, we have Aaron Provenzano, our IT and Zoom Wrangler uh, here. Uh, flag salute, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Sunshine statement, please, Mrs. Lohr. Please be advised that proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the Burlington County Times and Courier Post and published in the January 5th, 2021 editions. And written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. This meeting is in a Zoom a virtual meeting platform. The meeting ID and passcode have been published on the website and on the bulletin board. And the um, agenda for this meeting is available on the Township Bulletin Board and on the Township website. And advanced public comments will be accepted via written letter or electronic mail. And, and all those received at least six, no later than six hours prior to the commencement of the meeting will be entered into the meeting. And if anyone has um, members who, of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the meeting public comment sessions, May either make their comments or questions via audio option or by typing their comment or question uh, into the Zoom platform chat option. And any um, members of the public that are disruptive uh, and are warned may be uh, um, uh, not be able to participate during the live audio chat. That's it, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, just a brief uh, note, I've got a bit of a cough tonight, so I'm gonna be muting myself as I try to clear my throat and so forth. So hopefully I'll, I'll be in the right sequence and you won't hear that, but in, in inadvertently I'll probably cut myself off. So I'll try to catch myself, but that's why I'm kind of going in and out here on the audio channel. Uh, 2021 municipal budget, public hearing and adoption. Uh, uh, procedurally, we need to do a resolution 2021-66 authorizing municipal budget reading by title only. Um, need a motion on that, please. So moved. Second. Do I hear a second? Oh, I thought you second. Mike. I'll second. I'm sorry. Uh, motion by Mr. Let. second by Mr. Brown. Roll call, please. On Resolution 2021-66. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Patrick. Well, first I'd like to thank Richard and Rob for doing a great job on our budget, but I'm saying no because I this felt- isn't, this, isn't, this isn't voting on the budget. This is just reading the title. We'll have oh, the okay. hearing and vote on the budget. Okay, yes then, for the resolution. Thank you. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Lett. Yes. And Mr. Templeton. Yes. Uh, before we open to the public, uh, I'd like to invite to Mr. Inverso if he would make to make any comments on our budget. Uh, uh, Mr. Schwab has prepared as usual, very detailed uh, annual budget message, which has been posted on the municipal website. But uh, we've invited uh, Mr. Inverso who uh, does our books and keeps us financially between the lines uh, through the year. And if you have any comments, uh, Rob. Okay, thank you. Uh, first off, I'd like to say that every three years we get reviewed by the state of New Jersey, and this is our year to get reviewed. I'm happy to report that there were no findings on the budget or the annual financial statement. 
So we are free to adopt tonight. Uh, the budget as presented is well within the levy caps, the appropriation caps. The overall rate increase for local purpose was about a cent and a half, which equates to $190,000 property to about $27 a year. Um, that's where we stand. Thank you. Uh, the hearing is now open to the public for the Delanco Township 2021 municipal budget. Uh, if you have a comment or question, uh, please uh, uh, wave, raise your hand, uh, uh, attract your attention, uh, state your name and address, and we'll do our best to answer your questions or uh, comments. And, and Mayor, um, anyone that would like to uh, participate via audio, uh, please unmute. And also to those that uh, don't have that ability, uh, you have the chat. There is also the chat function where you can type in your comments or questions for the hearing on the 2021 municipal budget. I'm not seeing any indications of questions or comments. Do you see anything, Mrs. Lohr, coming in? I have the chat queue open. I do not see any any comments or questions in the chat queue for the um, public hearing for the municipal budget. Okay. Uh, at this time, uh, I'll close this portion of uh, this public hearing on the budget. That this I'll close at this time um, and uh, uh, go around the table as far as uh, the township committee for their comments on uh, the 2021 municipal budget. Uh, Let's see, Chris, would you like to start off? Sure, um, I just wanna say thank you to Richard and Rob and everyone who worked on the uh, on the budget. I think this was once again, a well thought out, um, long discussed budget. And uh, I think we came to a good resolution. So um, that's all I wanna say on that. Thank you. Um, this was Patrick, Kate. Um, Again, I want to thank Richard and Rob for doing a, a great job again this year on our budget. And um, I feel we all worked very hard on it. I'm disappointed that the township committee did not agree to um, allocate the found pilot funds for the school programs. Uh, and I, I, I don't understand it. I don't know why we couldn't do it. And uh, so I'm very disappointed that we didn't do that. Uh, Mr. Brown. Well, <clears throat> I, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, you know, we can talk to we're blue in the face on issues. And the fact is we are raising taxes uh, a little bit. The school's raising their taxes. Um, you know, it's no surprise that uh, I'm not running again for next year. But when I do leave, I just will ask myself the question, when does it ever stop? You know, will we ever reverse the process? Will we ever make hard cuts? Will we ever make hard decisions that that hurt? Um, it seems like uh, we make amends. There are five of us, and I know how to do business. And we get into the boardroom, and we uh, we make cuts, but we get money in. We got money going out. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, it just baffles me that. Um, the mentality of, of government is just increase, increase, increase. And it, it's, just, it's scary. It's just scary. So uh, that's all I have to say. It doesn't hurt me personally, but I think about the folks that are struggling. And, uh, you know, every year when that mortgage goes up because of their taxes going up, uh, I really hope that someday it just goes the other way or stays level. That's all. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Mr. Ouellette. I'd like to thank our professionals and I also like to uh, thank the department heads and all the organizations who have a piece of the township budget and their input that uh, went into the budget process. Uh, as far as helping the school, uh, I was hoping that we were going to be able to do that. Um, but I think in going in and looking at the process with the school and their, their budget, uh, because it's an, uh, they're an entity of themselves, 
they're not part of our township budget. Uh, the school budget is separate and they have a school board that uh, oversees the budget. And I think they have to make some hard choices. Uh, I know that they came to us for some help, but uh, in looking at their numbers and some of the decisions that they made, uh, especially at, with the administration, uh, we had a superintendent slash principal overseeing uh, the one school and a principal overseeing the other school. Uh, they went ahead after uh, a, a contract was agreed upon and then they promoted someone uh, to fill or to take over that principal's position. So that's like $100,000 right there. You know, uh, I, th I think they, they, in my opinion, needed to take a look at those hard numbers and say, we can't do that right now because of the position we're in uh, and kick that down the road maybe a year or two once the cash flow cha uh, picture changes. Uh, again, not getting into their budgets, but then again, uh, looking at the decision they made, you know, the state had certain uh, rules as far as expenses uh, and they voted to ignore that you know and here you're we are in tough times or they're in tough times and you know it's like when you get your budget at home and you say well we got to make some cuts you know maybe the newspaper goes or the cable tv you know some of those decisions have to be made uh for s some reason the board was not able to come to uh make some of those sound decisions uh so, you know, I find myself very, very reluctant to, to try and push forward to, to help them, sort of have to help themselves uh, before you come out and ask for help from others. So, um, back to our budget, uh, last year, we, we made some cuts and uh, I believe we only went up uh, less than half a percent on our budget increase because of the effects of the school uh, and the budget of their increasing that um, their tax rate going up for last year. And then this year, again, we held back. Um, we made some tough decisions where we uh, came to the agreement where we were going to have to cut personnel at uh, within the police department and make some cuts at the administrative side for uh, for our folks at town hall. Uh, we as a committee in, in coming together said, no, we don't wanna cut those that personnel because uh, it's gonna have an effect down the road. Uh, and then again, if we help the school out or we're able to help the school out, that those numbers that we lend out this year are going to, would come back and haunt us or affect us next year and having to make some major cuts at the uh, township side with uh, either more police cuts or uh, public works or even the uh, our folks in town hall that, uh, that, that do the administrative stuff. So uh, I feel com uh, very comfortable with where we're at uh, dealing with inflation and where uh, things are at with the budget in the uh, increase that we have for this year. So that's all I have to say at the moment. Thank you. Um, yeah, a lot's been said and, and I don't wanna repeat uh, uh, every, everything, but again, uh, as has been said, uh, appreciation to our, our staff uh, and to our department heads and all the volunteer groups that uh, over the years, uh, uh, have really uh, been mindful of expenditures and uh, uh, careful with your tax dollars and uh, going forward. Um, an annual budget, annual municipal budget is, uh, it's, it's not a snapshot of that year. It's, it's, it's a foundation for the, that year and going forward. And so if, uh, if you do something draconian that uh, sounds good politically or sounds good to make people happy or uh, accommodates uh, uh, some uh, um, need that may not be uh, the smartest thing to do, 
that really puts you in a bind and undermines what you're trying to do and as far as financial stability going forward uh, in the years to come. So it's a, it's a path that our, uh, our, our administrative staff and our uh, department heads have uh, um, been a part of. And uh, it, uh, I think we're on, we're on very good uh, sound financial footing going forward. Um, as a community in the last couple of months, I think uh, we've all learned a lot. I think uh, one of the benefits of COVID and Zoom and this, this format is there's been a lot more participation, a lot more information. Uh, there's also been a lot more bad information, disinformation and misunderstandings of how um, municipal finance, school district finance, it's very complicated. That's why we have professionals, Mr. Inverso, Mr. Schwab, um, uh, Ms. LaSalle at the school board. Uh, to distill that and, and keep us uh, keep us on the straight and narrow financially with the state and uh, and uh, on our financial health, but I think uh, it's uh, the last couple of months we've all as a community learned a lot how things work. We the township of Delanco we have our own budget we have our um, responsibilities financial responsibilities to the community. The school district, the Delanco school district has their responsibilities to provide a thorough and efficient education for our, our uh, young people. And those are two separate things. Um, there was a lot of confusion it seemed and even even a little bit uh, I listened in on, on the, uh, the May 5th the school district budget hearing. Uh, and there still seemed to be a little bit of, of um, whether it's just being tossed out there as a distractor or a real true misunderstanding. Um, yes, the township collects your, you know, you write your check to the township to pay your taxes, but the township, it's like a bit like a business going to 7-Eleven, the gas station, uh, uh, to Lowe's. Uh, that entity, those businesses collect the cost of what they're, you're purchasing and the taxes, the state and federal taxes as they may apply with that. And those businesses, distribute those taxes that they collect to the state entities and to the federal government. And that's really what the township does. Whatever uh, budget that the school district strikes, whatever budget that the fire district strikes, we pass that, that uh, money to the penny onto those entities. Otherwise, they would have to establish their own finance offices and collect taxes. And you'd be writing uh, three checks every uh, or four checks for the, the county as well. So. Um, uh, the argument or the or the misinformation that the that the township somehow controls the school district budget is is a falsehood that's been uh, um, given too much life. And I hope, uh, like I said, uh, through the last couple months uh, and through this format, that that uh, has been clarified and explained to people, and people understand that now. Um, the district runs, looking at their numbers, they run about eleven million dollar budget. Uh, is what uh, came out on May 5th. Uh, we run a budget uh, six and a half million. Um, theirs is significantly larger than ours. And so um, uh, it's, uh, as Mr. Lepp pointed out, it, uh, uh, and as I heard on the, on the May 5th uh, school district uh, budget hearing, it, there seems to be finally some acknowledgement that uh, they need to address um, those financial affairs and acknowledgement that uh, this has been a long time coming, that it hasn't been uh, addressed. And uh, I hope things turn around for the better. But anyway, that's the end of my comments. I appreciate uh, everyone's input. Uh, uh, and Mr. Mayor, excuse me. Uh, I need to ask Mr. Inverso uh, a question uh, pertaining to the budget that was published in the paper. Uh, this was uh, brought forth uh, on, there are two lines. One is for uh, school tax or uh, school tax and library tax or, or uh, aid. And uh, on what was published was zero. And it's my understanding that there's like a different tier, uh, a tier one and a tier two established. I don't know if that, if I'm explaining myself correctly here. I'm not sure what you're referring to. You're talking about the public advertisement? Correct. Okay. Uh, uh, in, in our budget, all we have is local tax, local municipal tax. We don't have a separate library tax. The library tax is the county tax that we pay. No, the That's library 
tax is if you're not a part of the county system and you assess a tax. We don't have that in the language township. In part of our budget, we don't assess taxes for the school either no. because they are their own entity. No. They, okay. they raise their own tax, correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any last comments before we uh, move to adopt the uh, 2021 municipal budget? Resolution 2020-67, adoption of the uh, 2021 Delanco Municipal Budget. Motion, please. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Lett, second by uh, Ms. Holland. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Patrick. No. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olat. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes. Thank you all for the uh, very good work. Uh, ordinance 2021-8, amending chapter 295 governing vehicles and parking. This is a section of Burlington Avenue. This is the second reading by title only public hearing. Uh, the hearing is now open to the public for ordinance 2021-8. Uh, again, uh, once again, questions or comments, state your name, address. Make sure you to unmute if you have any comments or question or type your comment or question into the chat function. Hearing and seeing no comments or questions. Mrs. Lohr, anything coming in? No, not for this ordinance. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, motion please on ordinance 2021-8. I'll make the motion, Mike. Thank you, Mr. Brown, second. Second. That's Kate. Thank you. Second by Ms. Fitzpatrick. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olat. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes. And appreciation to uh, the chief and his officers for uh, sorting through that and uh, working it out with the county and so forth. Thank you. Uh, Ordinance 2020. 21-9, amending chapter 295, governing vehicles and parking. This is a section of uh, Emory Way. Uh, second reading by title only, public hearing. Uh, hearing is now open to the public. And seeing no questions or comments, anything coming in, Mrs. Lohr? For 2021-9, there are no nothing in the chat function. All right, very good. Uh, hearing is now closed to the public on ordinance 2021-9. A motion, please, on this ordinance. Mike, before we vote, can we just review that that piece on Emory Way is from Newton's Landing Boulevard to John Marr Way. Is that it? Just the one section in there? Correct. It's yeah. just uh, just that one side. One side. Okay. Yeah. Uh, parallel to Creek Road, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. Closest to Creek Road. Correct. Yes, closest to Creek Road. And, and why was this, Jesse? Why, what the, uh, when you look at the turning radius from turning onto uh, Emory Way from Newton's Landing yes. Boulevard and then turning onto Mayor, um, it's real tight and a, a car's area could potentially get sideswiped. And especially with the, the any larger vehicle or, or delivery trucks going through that area, I think it's uh, best served. And you're not really losing, there's no house mm -hmm. on there, so it's not uh, really. Will, will there be a house on that corner lot? I, not do I know of. Um, maybe Ms. Martin can answer that, but uh, I figured if there was going to be one, they'd be start building it. But no, all of the all of the lots have been uh, oh, okay. the work has been yeah. started. And that was brought to my attention by a resident out there, and I asked Jesse to look into it. And the last house that's being built is actually facing John Moore Way. And it's the last house there. Um, but apparently someone was parking there and it oh. was causing difficulty. So that's why I forwarded it to Jesse to take a look at it. All right, then. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, any other questions on that? Uh, I lost track. Did we already have a motion on that one? No, but I will move to for that motion. Very good. Second. Second. All right, motion by Ms. Fitzpatrick, second by Mr. Allett. Roll call, please, on uh, ordinance uh, number nine. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Allett. 
Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes, thank you. Uh, let's see here. Ordinance 2021-10, amending chapter 295, governing vehicles and parking section of Cooperstown Road. This is the second reading by title only in public hearing. Um, Chief, do you just want to give, this is no parking from Tungsten all the way out to? To the township line, which is prior to Perkins Lane. Uh, we're running into an issue right now with uh, Enterprise Drive, the number of trucks going in and out of there. Um, it's causing a backlog and they're parking on Cooperstown Road, uh, which is not safe. The town, uh, excuse me, the county engineer reviewed it and agreed. And then this is uh, being proactive uh, for the Dolan, <coughs> excuse me, the current um, um, warehousing that's being developed next door to the township building, um, being uh, proactive with that and any other potential warehousing that's gonna be coming up to limit uh, trucks, truck to tractor and trailers specifically from lining up on Cooperstown Road waiting to gain entry into one of those uh, warehouses. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, motion, please, on uh, Ordinance 10. So moved. Wait a minute. Did you open it to the public, Mayor? You're right. I jumped it. Uh, Got to have that first. Uh, hearings now open to the public for Ordinance 2021-10. This is uh, vehicles and parking on uh, Cooperstown Road. Hearing nothing. Seeing no, nothing coming in. All right. Nothing, nothing in the chat. All right. Now I'll go back to where I was. So motion, please. So moved. Uh, motion Second. by Mr. Brown. Second. Second. Second by Ms. Fitzpatrick. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Can't hear him. She's muted. <laughs> Christine, you're muted. Thumbs up. Okay, sorry, I couldn't unmute. I couldn't, my screen was frozen. Uh, yes. Okay, great. And Mr. Olette? Yes. Mr. Templeton? Yes, thank you. Uh, public comment statement. Uh, purpose of public comment session is to allow residents to share information and or views with the Delanco Township Committee. Since the committee may be hearing the information for the first time, it's not always possible to have issues and questions settled within the public comment session. Uh, report of advanced remote meeting comments, questions. This section is to acknowledge and rate, read those comments and questions received by the municipal, municipal clerk in advance of the remote meeting, either by, via electronic email or written letter as required by NJAC 30 colon 39-1 at Sequitter. Uh, members of the public participating live in the meeting will get that, given the opportunity for comments and questions during the meeting in one or both of the public comment sessions. Uh, meeting is open to the public for comments and questions. This is session one. And for the record, Mayor, we um, did not receive any advanced comments or questions or a few pieces of correspondence that came in, but they'll be entered during the correspondence section. Mayor, Mike Bart, um, Mike Bartlett, Matt Bartlett, my dad, uh, 1800 Second Street, uh, Delanco. Uh, has anyone heard anything from Joe Brickley at the county with what's going on at uh, 507 Burlington Avenue with the demolition? Uh, yes, I, actually, I just talked with uh, um, or had an email from Steve um, Lipinski. Mm -hmm. um, the contractor is working on another demolition right now. And I just got that email last week. Uh, and that as soon as he finishes up with that job, he's starting our job, but he can't give me a date. So, I mean, this has been going on and on for years. So three weeks um, ago, they told me it'd be about three they, weeks. Yeah, they have the key. Uh, the contractor has the key. I do have the contractor's name and number. I may give him a call myself to find out what's going on. But uh, Steve told me that he was working on another demolition and we're next in line. You, you may want to mention that uh, in the event that they want to come next week, I don't know if that's the best week to come. <laughs> right, but, because yeah. of the parade coming up too. So uh, I will talk to them about that. Thank you, Kate. I brought that up because, you know, we're getting into the almost, uh, thankfully, the summer months. And we do the ice cream shop corner. It would be nice to give a clear intersection for people crossing there. Um, 
far enough back to have a good line of sight to that intersection at Vine Street as they're coming around the bend and getting rid of that uh, dilapidated house that's falling apart would be a sure good start to that. Yes, Thank you. you're right. That's all I got. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and and Kate, as if, as you receive stuff, uh, as it's come seems to be coming to you, would you ensure that you send that on to uh, the chief and the administration just so everyone else is is aware of whatever progress or changes are coming? Okay. For me. No, for Kate. Oh, for Kate. I'm sorry. I thought you said Kitty. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I just know if Rob, are you still here for the bond ordinance or I don't? Oh, he's muted. Rob, uh, you're no, I'm just hanging around. I could leave. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I just know I don't I, think I have I, to be here for the bond ordinance. I would just like to say on the ordinance, I did file the supplemental debt statement with FAST system. And after it's approved tonight, Bob Hud, now the CFO, will certify that. Is that anytime you authorize debt, you have to do a, a supplemental debt. All right. Uh, does anyone have any questions of Mr. Inverso before uh, yeah, he I, gets his uh, ass to leave? I do. Uh, this, this ordinance, um, I guess what I want to know, is this a combination of all our, of our bands or do we still have bands floating? This is new, new issues. This is, okay. is this long-term here or is this a bond anticipation note? It'll be bond anticipation. So this is another bond anticipation note. Okay. Do we will be in effect. What, what's happening is we're authorizing debt. And is it, uh, let me check the ordinance. It's, uh, the amount of the debt is 614175 The overall ordinance is 721500 But right. we have a down payment in there and there's a $75,000 um, community development program grant. Okay. Uh, it just, it seems we kind of set these and then we sort of throw them around a little bit through the year, take out from this, put into this. I guess I've gotten confused on just how many bond anticipation notes there are out there. And I had questioned during the budget if we were gonna do a long-term capital improvement fund. And the answer was uh, no, because of um, it was too much of a, a hassle. I guess, could we get a synopsis of where the town is as far as the debt load goes? I thought Richard supplied that to us when our budget hearings. He was pretty thorough about giving us the whole list of the debt. Yeah, most of it, uh, the ability to do this, John, was the uh, most of our debt has been retired and paid off. The long term debt has. We do have some bond anticipation notes out there. Okay. And, and some course, of that was consolidated, right? Yeah. So some of the band, some of the bond anticipation notes have been consolidated into, into this? No. no. This, this, is, this is separate, this is new debt. New debt. Right, for new projects. Now, in, in Article C, installation of sidewalks on Cooperstown Road and drainage improvements, I, I know we've beaten this to death. I don't see Cooper Street uh, on here. I don't see Hickory Street on here. I just see $235,000 for Replacement of sidewalks on Cooperstown Road. Replacement. We don't have any on Cooperstown Road. Can can somebody explain that to me? Um, no, I did not prepare the ordinance. It was prepared basically by Richard and Bonkim. Okay. Matt, Mike, do you know anything about this, Mr. Mayor? I think you're muted, Mike. I'm muted. sorry, thank you. Uh, I th this is what we've been discussing for the last several months, uh, uh, this, this capital capital plan. And mm -hmm. I think the term replacement in this context probably uh, also uh, captures a uh, new sidewalk, uh, whether it's, uh, well, just new, new sidewalk in that stretch that we're trying to install, so. Uh, this has been a long time coming. Um, 
Paul Barn for Public Works that always seems to be uh, on our wish list and always seems to get cut uh, every year during the budget um, negotiations and, and harangue. So, um, like I said, uh, as Kate mentioned, uh, the debt uh, uh, the debt schedule that Richard uh, worked so hard on and, and his uh, methodology to keep the debt level consistent um, through the years. And the other thing that's helping us is the low interest rates. So it, uh, it, uh, a couple things came together that we retired some long-term debt and were able to uh, get good money at a low cost for some desperately needed uh, uh, projects going forward that, uh, that are needed. Uh, John, I, I did, well, I'm sorry. I, I, I did look up in the annual financial statement. We have the note outstanding at the end of the year was 1199410 There's one note for several ordinances. And what happened, we paid, we're paying off this year, 357810 in principle. So the new note for that old, uh, all those old ordinances will be 841600 plus perhaps this ordinance, the 614, 175. So we're paying off quite a bit of the principal uh, in this year. And the note that we took out last year was only 0.95%, less than 1%. So the interest we're paying on it is about $11,000. Uh, I wanted to add um, with regard to the sidewalk replacement that I think Richard included uh, Cooper Town Road uh, because that section um, of Coopertown Road to the railroad station, which is so bad, um, it may be considered Cooper Street, but I think we were referring to it as Coopertown Road because the replacement or to install the sidewalks at Public Works and the municipal building are only somewhere around $90,000, if I recall, when Richard thought of a figure because we were going to apply for a grant we were going to use that area to apply for a grant at one time. So I believe that sidewalk is in that amount, John. And it's just called Coopertown Road because to me, that was always Coopertown Road. It was never Cooper Street. Right. And, right. and, and Mayor, if I may add, I'm looking at the um, spreadsheets for the capital projects that Richard sent out. And this is, um, for also the, the sidewalks, any road improvements and drainage. There are some drainage issues in this area that needs to be taken care of in, a, along with those sidewalks. And there is an engineering component also for this. And this marries this 235,000 in the uh, total estimated total cost in section C that John referred to does include the $75,000 CDGB grant. Right. Um, which includes so, Hickory, which includes that whole area there yeah, along Cooper yes. Street, which is really Coopertown Road in my mind. So, uh, Rob, we will include this in the debt service in next year's budget, and it, or, or are we going to pay it all? Well, typically, what happens if we pass this? Uh, if we're going to do the project this year when we need the funding, we'll go out and get a note favorable. Okay. But we got to pay it back. Our existing note is coming due on June 4th. So that's right around the corner. So that probably will not include this. Well, it's probably a, a separate note for this bond room. Okay. And if I may add, uh, John, permanent financing um, is very expensive to do. And we've been getting great um, rates for the bond anticipation notes. So it's, um, financially feasible to stay with the bond anticipation notes rather than a more costly uh, permanent financing with uh, municipal bonds. But next, next year in the budget, how much will we have to pay on all of these uh, bond anticipation notes? Uh, In other words, I'm buying a new car, Rob. What's my payment going to be? <laughs> well, essentially for bond anticipation notes, the payment can be whatever you like it to be. Right. They do have a minimum amount that you can pay. We've been paying way in excess of the minimum. 
And the budget uh, that we just approved, the principal and interest is uh, $469,000 in debt service for the bond, bond anticipation. Oh, what, wasn't that our last payment on the municipal building? No. Mike, wasn't that? We already paid the that. Of the long-term note? That one's done. Yeah, we paid was... serial bonds off. We have no bonds outstanding. We just have bond anticipation notes. Okay. We, we have very little debt. Right? For, for a town of our size, we have very little debt, which is great. Okay. I just bring it up too because I see all these nice people on here listening, and I think we owe them an explanation uh, what we're borrowing for and how it works. That, that's all. I understand a lot more than they do, but I just wanted some clarification. Thank what you. are we going to do without you, John? You're going you're gonna to move on. You're going to live life. You're gonna, it's all going to work. It's all going to work. All right. It always does. John, you can always zoom in, right? Hey, you never know. I might come back. <laughs> All right. All right. Since I've gotten, uh, let's see, where am I here? Mayor, uh, the, the meeting, I believe, is still open to the public. No, we closed. You did? Yeah. So Mr. Bar um, Bartlett was the only one for that yes, section. Okay. So. Uh, uh, if I can uh, toss in, if we're still on the open, uh, Mike, uh, it's uh, Peter Fritz calling 303 Union Avenue in Delanco. I just wanted to add for the 507 Burlington Avenue, since I knew that that uh, building was slated for demolition, I did a deep dive into the history of that building and it's very interesting, but I think we probably got as much of the history of that building as we can gather before it's uh, demolished. I've been over several times to take additional photographs uh, we haven't been allowed to go inside the building, so there's not much I can do there. But I have gone, you know, back through the records and, you know, chain of occupants. And uh, it started off as a blacksmith shop. A guy named Mr. Smith. All right. In, Thank you. Right. And ran a Thank blacksmith you, Peter. shop. There. Yep. So Thank uh, you. we've got about as much as we can get out of that. And we're sorry to see it go, but we understand. Thanks for the good work, Peter, and uh, all the history board. Uh, let's see, since I got out of order again, because I was trying to turn uh, Mr. Reverso loose and let him go home. Uh, let's see, we're... Quick <laughs> What's that? He didn't run quick enough. No, he didn't. He didn't get away. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the meeting is now closed to the public comment question section of the meeting is now closed to the public. Uh, Ordinance 2021-11. Uh, an ordinance by the township of Delanco in the county of Burlington State, of New Jersey, prohibiting the operation of any class of cannabis business within its geographical boundaries and amending chapter 110 of the township code. This is first reading by title only, set public hearing date for June 14th at 7 p.m. and refer to, uh, and this will be referred to the Delanco Joint Land Use Board for, and for master plan consistency review. Um, this is basically the opt out uh, ordinance and uh, uh, as we've talked about uh, at, at the previous meeting and last month um, this is uh, basically a, a bit of a timeout that gives uh, the township time to uh, consider uh, all the ramifications of the, uh, the state law uh, uh, as a result of the ballot question last year and legislation introduced in Trenton and given that there are many uncertainties on the many parts of application of this, um, it's felt that uh, at this time, uh, the municipality will opt out of uh, uh, any of the, any class of uh, the cannabis businesses within its boundaries, uh, except for the, uh, I guess, class six, correct? Right, delivery to our residents is yep. mandatory by the state law. And as I as I, I said, this was a first reading by title only for um, public hearing on June 14th. Um, motion, please. So moved. Second. Second. Second by, who, who got that? Kate. Uh, Ms. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Uh, the two inch, um, Introduce ordinance 2021-11 on the first reading by title only set public hearing date of June 14th refer to the Delanco Joint Land Use Board and Math for Master Plan Consistency Review. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. No. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. 
Mr. Templeton. Yes. Uh, let's see, um, comments and Mayor, reports. Yes. Before you, you move on, um, Doug, does this need to go, since this is um, cannabis with uh, very detailed uh, state regulation, does this on introduction need to go anywhere else besides the Joint Land Use Board? Not on introduction, no. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Uh, comments, professionals. Um, Chief DeSanto. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just give you an update on Enterprise Drive. I met with the um, the business operation managers on April fourth. Um, it seems the Misfits is the one that has the biggest contribution with the truck stacking on Enterprise Drive. They implemented some um, some proactive measures in order to try to reduce that or send out communications to their vendors who make deliveries uh, with the dispatchers of the truck drivers to advise them that there's going to be, well, there is no parking on um, in the area. Um, as soon as we get the signs up, that, that message will be reinforced both by message and by police enforcement. And um, they also, uh, a couple times a day, go up and down Enterprise Drive and try to pull those trucks in the yard. Uh, if they're not scheduled to make a delivery for a day or two early, then they turn them around. They have uh, cleared six additional spaces for tractor and trailers, which they can put in staging in their property. They plan by Friday to have additional five more, um, five door, five more slots for uh, standby trucking. And um, they're going to continue to clear out their their yard with uh, storage trailers, and also they have improved their um, receiving operations in order to speed up the delivery. So uh, they advise me they're making the efforts, and we're going to continue keep an eye on the intersection for state regulations or state motor vehicle violations and about uh, blocking the intersection. But um, as soon as we get the signs up, then we'll start enforcing the uh, no parking on enterprise. And then we're gonna, um, I've already talked to Public Works about um, ordering signs for Coopertown Road in anticipation of tonight's uh, uh, passing of the ordinance. And so we'll get that uh, working as well. Just, uh, just to be, a, you know, give you a, full information, Public Works, Mr. Fenimore realizes the amount of signs that he's gonna to have to put up on Enterprise Drive at my request. He's uh, obtained assistance or, um, from the Burlington County, um, I guess, Highway Department. He's got a quote um, to have them install the signs due to the uh, limitation of his manpower. And um, I'll let him report on that amount for what I understand it's 1500 but I don't have the exact amount, uh, $1,500. And um, so that's uh, time not taken away from the public works, cutting, uh, maintaining our facilities. Um, also, just want to give you an update on the alterations of the police department. Uh, you know, we have uh, been in, in works with the architect uh, designing and planning the improvement of the uh, detention area and the uh, processing area. Uh, where we stand right now is we're just waiting official uh, word in writing from Department of Corrections that we can proceed as planned. Uh, initially, they gave me the verbal okay of uh, not addressing the Sally Port because that would be a structural issue. And um, then they verbally said, wait a second. Then I got them to say verbally they're, they're okay with it. Uh, just as long as we understand that the Sally Port is something that uh, should be um, improved so vehicles can actually park in there and open their doors. And I told, explained to them, you know, the government, uh, you know, expenditures we do in increments. So let's address the most, most impactful uh, item which can improve the safety both for officers and detainees, and that's the interior of the building. So, um, so I'm waiting for them to actually give me in writing that they're good with my plan. Um, I've been told verbally that they are, but I don't want to proceed with a big uh, public 
a bid package going out until I got confirmation. So that's where we stand. And I just want to give the committee an update that, you know, uh, the, um, the New Jersey Department of Corrections is willing to give exemptions for the Sally Port at this time. And, um, but there could be a time down the road where they could stop uh, issuing exemptions uh, for the Sally Port, which means it needs to be addressed immediately. But uh, what I would recommend is we start developing a plan like we did this, uh, nothing that would be coming the next year, but we can start looking into feasibility of uh, what it would take to make it safe to actually park a vehicle in there and get out and not be trapped uh, between the pin between the car and the, and the wall. So that's uh, where we stand with those items. At 507, we already talked about the Franklin Street pedestrian crossing. Uh, the contractor, uh, Mr. Mayor, as you know, there was some issues with the pre-ordered uh, equipment, which didn't fit. And the uh, contractor, we're awaiting his contact for us to uh, go back out there and wait for them to finish up the job. So um, we're, we're uh, at, their, at their waiting. So that, that's all I have. Thank you. Um, yeah, on that, uh, the pedestrian uh, caution light at Franklin Street, uh, I was down there that day when the parts were being installed. And uh, um, as anyone who's tried to do a home project at home and you end up uh, going to Home Depot for a part and come back home and nothing fits, well, that's kind of what happened. Uh, the parts that they received uh, to, to assemble that uh, light pole and standard and arm uh, did not fit together. So uh, they were calling the 800 number to uh, try to get a new set of parts that would fit together. Uh, Mr. Fenimore, are you out there? All right. I did not see him tonight, Mayor. Okay. Um, Mrs. Lord, do you have anything to add? Administration? Janice, you're muted. Hi, uh, not at this particular time. Thank you. All right. Uh, and Mr. Heinhold, I assume most of your stuff's executive. Yes, we've covered everything that I had uh, ordinance wise and everything else is for executive mayor. All right, thank you. Uh, Township committee, uh, Ms. Fitzpatrick, you wanna lead off? Sure. Um, well, I have to say that it was very nice to see everybody out and about for the yard sale and the hoagie sale. And I know that the fire department and the emergency squad sold out pretty early. So thank you for that. Um, I did do the elected officers training through the GIF, and I would recommend if you haven't done it to definitely do it because it involves verbal abuse and harassment and um, actually brought back memories to an incident that I, happened to me last July. Um, the sewer authority. Uh, actually, we, I've had two different meetings with them. We're working on the memorial for Freddie Weller. Uh, and I arranged for the street sign Weller Way. For everyone's information, the memorial is scheduled for June the 6th at 11 a.m. at West Avenue Station. Um, the regular sewer authority meeting, uh, there's uh, no update on Dolan. They're waiting for the township to settle its fair share. Uh, the jetback purchase, we're hoping to find a recent purchase so members can visit and actually see it in action before we make the purchase because it's a large purchase. I believe it's $350,000. Uh, and our attorney for the sewer authority is following up with the state on the status of the sewer authority's application for funding for the improvements to our system and lines. Uh, I did attend the Board of Ed meeting on the 5th, and I was sorry to hear that they will be cutting 5.2 employees uh, and also some student programs. I had um, made mention that it was my hope that they would actually not lay off teachers, that they would maybe cut the administration, and that um, 
they indicate, and we I did ask them about the funds that are supposed to be coming through. And they said they have not received any notification of any funds. And just because something is posted in the newspaper doesn't necessarily mean they're receiving it, when they're receiving it, or how they can spend it. So hopefully they will get that information soon. And maybe those jobs, whoever they may be, since they could not announce them, uh, will be rehired. Um, I, Randy Cherkis reached out to me regarding the senior services that will be available at the Zerbrook Mansion. Uh, I will forward that information to Janice and Beverly and Richard so we can post something on our website as well as send out an email blast. And I would like to send an email out to the Senior Citizen Club. Uh, regarding those services. They're going to begin in June, uh, the first and third Saturday from 9 to 12. And um, they will be walk-ins initially, but they will um, eventually have to set up an appointment. Um, I attended uh, at, by invitation the um, Soul Tax a ribbon cutting for the solar program in town. It was really quite a historical event. The president of the BPU was there, the governor's office, uh, Herb Conaway, Troy Singleton, uh, the contractor, and of course, uh, Soltage, um, Zach Meyer and Randy Orloff, who actually presented uh, a PowerPoint to the township committee. Um, what an opportunity to have that in Delanco. Uh, Winsinger was there as well and I spoke with her and it was a win-win for them. So I, I had uh, the opportunity to say a few words and I was very proud to be there at that time. I did miss the history board meeting because I went to the board of ed meeting and I know they're still working on signage and also a booklet uh, with regard to some of the other properties in town. Uh, so, um, I guess I can catch up with them later. And I did miss the rec meeting. Uh, I did meet with the, the gentleman who we're gonna have as the grand marshal to get some information for him. And it's uh, gonna be Mark Fenimore this year. And just let me look and make sure I have the right information. Yes, I did. And I will forward this information to you, Janice, for you and Beverly on the uh, senior program at Zerbra. They will have a, a social worker there uh, at that time and her phone number is available to them as well. And um, I think I covered everything. Oh, I did want to mention to Jesse that when I went out to the ribbon cutting for the solar farm, that the trucks were packed along Enterprise Drive and that was on the 13th. So that was just last Thursday. And it was very difficult getting, I had to park in Misfits parking lot uh, because I couldn't find any parking. And um, it was very difficult getting out of there because you can't see beyond these tractors, or, you know, tractor trailers. So um, th that will be a good thing when that signage is up. And the other thing I had a question for you, Jesse, um, you know, Memorial Day is coming around. I have the flowers ready for the gazebo. They've been in my yard for, um, I guess two weeks ago, I planted the window boxes. But I want to, I'm afraid to put them out there because of the damage that's been done down at Gateway Park in the gazebo. Did we put that camera up yet? Yeah, the camera's up. Oh, good. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. And we've been trying to do extra patrols as well. All right, good. Then I'll put them up out there this weekend. I'll have Public Works help me carry them. Some of them are, some of them are heavy. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brown. Okay, I'm back. Um, yes, the Economic Advisory Council is firing back up. We're going to meet tomorrow night, uh, as per Shirley Rossi. Uh, we're going to meet at the municipal building. It's been uh, it's been a year uh, or better, so um, look forward to that. Uh, I I need to report that uh, at last shade tree meeting, there is to be a massive tree planting in town. Forty five trees. Uh, 
uh, co-chair Matalevich has worked with the New Jersey Shade Tree Federation to have their uh, staff plant these trees. And uh, Dr. John Payet is in the audience, I think. Uh, John, do you want to add to that at all? John Payet, I know you're there. Yes, John. I think um, it was postponed to uh, June 5th to the 7th. OK. And uh, do we do we know where all these trees are going, John? Bill does. Bill does. OK. So uh, we'll uh, keep an eye on that for June. Are they open for a resident? Are we what, open? Are the trees open to have a resident have a yeah. tree? on their property and they have to sign up with shade tree there there is a list a, a planting list that has been ongoing okay uh, okay so if you know anybody else though email the shade tree commission um you know to get that put on the list okay thank you and uh, other than that that's that's all i have mike thank you don uh, Ms. Holland. Um, I missed the rec commission the other night, but did attend the Hawk Island cleanup on Saturday, which was a very well attended event. And we picked up tons and tons of trash from back there. Uh, we happened upon some boaters and a couple of us made some snarky comments to ourselves that, you know, they were probably gonna leave all their trash, but uh, much to our surprise, when they saw what we were doing, they started picking up trash with us. So that was a nice, pleasant surprise. Um, other than that, just looking forward to the Economic Advisory Council getting together tomorrow. So uh, I think it's been a little over a year at this point. So um, that's that's all. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ouellette. Uh Joint Land Use Board uh, didn't have any applications this month. So there was no meeting there. Uh, the school board has a special meeting this Wednesday, uh, May 19th at 7 p.m. And uh, the website information's uh, on our website uh, for the connection to the school board meeting. Uh, COVID, uh, the CDC has, uh, I guess, changed, is changing some of their guidelines, but uh, with our policies at town hall currently uh, we're still under state mandate new jersey uh, the governor hasn't lifted uh, the state mandates as far as wearing masks uh, so at this point until we hear uh, from uh, i guess the governor or from the state on uh, the change of mask policies uh, for inside uh, we have our policy for for town hall where folks need to wear masks coming in. Uh, that still is to remain in effect. Uh, our employees currently uh, at their workstations uh, are able to, are, are don't have to wear a mask, uh, but if someone approaches them or they uh, get up to go leave uh, their workstation, they ha have to wear a mask. And uh, currently that policy is still in effect. Uh, again, until we get uh, a definite uh, change in uh, mandates from the state uh, and they, uh, the governor lifts those, uh, then we will follow uh, suit with that. Um, so I know there's been a lot of confusion out there uh, because of the guidelines that the CDC uh, has uh, suggested or has made. Uh, and there are many states that uh, don't have these mandates, but there are currently 18 states that are still under uh, mandate for wearing masks. Um, and I have a question um, since you're doing CDC, didn't they uh, increase the number of um, people allowed inside a building from 25% to 50? I would have to uh, check that. That sounds correct. Uh, yeah. But again, the, the mask uh, standards are still there. 
Yes. Right, but I mean, for for us to start meeting in town hall, I just wondered if that had any bearing on that. I'll uh, follow up on that. Make Thank a call tomorrow just to get clarification. Thank you, Kate. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess that's all I have. Uh, Kate already uh, reported all the good work that the sewage authority is doing and the things that they're involved. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. A uh, couple items, as, as previously mentioned, uh, the relief uh, federal funding coming down, the American Relief uh, uh, Plan. Uh, the information, or as, as I receive it from Congressman Kim's office, uh, New Jersey State Senator uh, Troy Singleton, as it flows through uh, from their chiefs of staff to me, i forwarding it to uh, um, uh, Mrs. Lohr and Mr. Schwab, and also to uh, Mr. Mersinger and uh, uh, Board President uh, Karamanugian, and just to keep them apprised of uh, anything that I've been receiving as far as uh, funding or timelines and so forth. Um, there was a release of information from Treasury um, last week on uh, some of the criteria for uh, spending those funds and, um, and the public law that went with it that uh, comprised of about uh, 120 pages. So that's all been forwarded to uh, those individuals for a record and reference. Um, I'm continuing to work on the uh, new revised flood ordinances that uh, uh, we did this once in 2017 and DEP wants us to uh, revise what we have. So I'm cranking, I'm still um, trying to get some questions answered from DEP on how that fits into Delanco. Uh, also working with the Bridge Commission and uh, the municipal uh, self-assessment uh, for the uh, plan reauthorization uh, that all the river towns are working on. And uh, I've been plowing through that and uh, with uh, the help of uh, Mr. Stanley Kynes down at the Bridge Commission. So uh, regarding the solar farm, I was unable to attend. Uh, I've been out of town uh, pretty much for the last three weeks um, attending to a family medical issue. Um, but I did uh, contact uh, a government affairs official at the uh, uh, State uh, Bureau of Public Utilities and uh, just uh, um, mentioned some things that uh, as far as the solar farm and the uh, um, business entities, uh, AC Power, Saltage and uh, Neighborhood Sun, as far as what they their expectations of Delanco's part in that project was. So I'll be um, following up with them in June uh, they were very interested in uh, some of the things, and I mentioned uh, Mr. Heinhold's uh, memo that he prepared uh, as far as uh, uh, what uh, uh, issues that may arise from the uh, township endorsing a product or a, uh, uh, the sale of uh, some service that uh, uh, a business may want to uh, seek our, our help or uh, in marketing that product. So I'll be following up with that. Um, and I think that's, I'll cut off uh, my report at that point. Uh, well, Mike, I, I would like you to know that the Delanco Women's Civic Club, uh, since they are not affiliated with the township, um, will be sending information out to their members regarding um, the solar farm and to anyone else that they feel would be interested in joining up. They probably have maybe a hundred um, shares left, maybe not even that many at this point. All right, moving on. Uh, consent agenda items. Uh, consent agenda items are considered to be routine, will be enacted with a single motion. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Is there any item in the consent that uh, uh, any committee member has additional questions or would like to, to be considered separately. We've uh, talked a lot about ordinance 12, the bond uh, ordinance. Are there any further questions on that or anything else? Mayor, the approval of minutes from 419, if you could remove them separately, I was not at that meeting. All right, uh, 419, okay. We'll pull that out separately. All right, thanks for pointing that out, John. All right, if there's no, uh, nothing to be pulled out. Okay, ordinance um, 
2021-12, a bond ordinance, bond ordinance of the Township of Delanco and the County of Burlington authorizing the construction of improvements of the facilities at the public works garage and improvements to the municipal building and installation slash replacement of sidewalks along Cooperstown Road and improvements to the irrigation systems and repair repaving of the parking lot at the Field of Dreams Park, appropriating the total sum of $721,500 therefore and appropriating $32,325 from the capital improvement fund and $75,000 from the uh, year 2021 community development block grant program and the authorizing the issuance of $614,175 in bonds or notes of the township for financing such appropriations and making certain determinations and covenants and authorizing certain related actions and connections with the foregoing. This is first reading by title only, except public hearing date for June 14, 2021, 7 p.m. Ordinance 2021-13, an ordinance to amend the ordinance entitled an ordinance of the Township of Delanco providing for and determining the rate of compensation of officers and employees. This is first reading by title only and set public hearing date for June 14, 2021 at 7 p.m. Resolution 2021-68, resolution authorizing placement of a of sign designating Weller Way in honor and in memory of Charles Fred Weller. Resolution-69, amending chapter 295-40, governing stop intersections. Resolution-70, a resolution authorizing grant and grant application for the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs Local Recreation Improvement Grant. Payment of bills, account current fund, $201,926.86. Payroll, $100,956.24. Capital fund, $3,900 even. Escrow trust, $5,340.75. Municipal open space, $20,222.63. Approval of business licenses 2021-25-32 uh, uh, through 42. Approval of the department reports. Approval of the consent agenda. Motion, please. So moved. Uh, motion by Ms. Fitzpatrick. Second. And. Uh, that was Ms. Holland, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, roll call, please. Roll call. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Arlette. Mr. Arlette. He's muted. He's muted. He's getting there. Hold on. Yep. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Templeton. Uh, yes. All right, going back to approval of minutes, uh, April 19th, 2021. Uh, a motion, please. So moved. Second. By Mr. Patrick, second by Mr. Allett. Roll call. Okay, Mr. Brown. Abstain. Mrs. Patrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Allett. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes. Uh, Okay, I think we cleaned that up. Uh, meetings now open to the public for comments and questions. Session two, once again, state your name and address. And Mrs. Laura, any comments, advanced questions in the... Uh... Not at this time. Again, anyone from the public wishing to ask any questions through the audio, please unmute and or use the chat function. A small point, it's Peter Fritz back, uh, 303 Union Avenue. I was doing some research on um, uh, houses along Cooper, uh, Coopertown Road, and um, in answer to the question that you brought up uh, earlier, there regarding Coopertown Road is really starting at the railroad. And so they include the lumber yard and those buildings along in there, all under the address of Coopertown Road. So I was always under the impression that Cooper Street ended with the tracks, but um, uh, New then th this was from the New Jersey tax rolls uh, in researching property addresses. So that stretch of, apparently is called Coopertown Road. Uh, thank you. That's it. Thank you. Any other comments on this uh, session two? Hearing none and seeing none, uh, we'll close session two to the public. Correspondent, Mrs. Sure. Moore. Yes. Um, the first thing is that because this was uh, received after the agenda was um, done, 
This came in today. It's a uh, facility request use for the Gateway Park for uh, June 14th um, by the uh, Troop 19 Boy Scouts and I believe Pac-19 also um, white flag retirement ceremony oh, at good. Gateway Park. And, and let's see, there's a time. So did every, I did eat, scan that in an email. Did everybody get that? Yes. Yes. So um, if it's okay uh, and everyone is in agreement, uh, if there could just be a motion to approve that facility request use uh, for the Boy Scouts for the flag retirement ceremony at Gateway Park on June 14th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Flag day. Yes, flag day. I always take my flag. I always like to, to attend that service. It's really nice, but we have a meeting that night. Now, I don't see a time. Um, six, no, it's, it's 6 p.m. Yeah. yeah. Six, 6 p.m. Okay. All right. And then we received um, two letters submitted, uh, actually received today in my mailbox um, from Christina DeSanti and from Joseph Chaska. Uh, requesting appointment to the economic advisory board. And I checked the records, we, too, we do have two vacancies on the economic advisory council actually. So um, Christine, I mean, Christina DeSanti is both a business owner and a resident and Joseph Chaska um, is a business owner. I'm not sure if he lives in town, but he is a business owner and that is, um, provides for that even though he would not live in town, he can serve on the Economic Advisory Council as a business representative. Which is great. Yeah, uh -huh. so uh, um, if the Township Committee uh, would like to move on those appointments this evening, you can appoint both those people. Like I said, we do have two vacancies um, or um, whatever your pleasure is. I don't see any reason not to. I'd yeah. like a little bit more to know about who the folks are. Uh, well, they, um, Joe is farmers insurance and oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Joe is farmers insurance and uh, he's done a lot of different things in town. Yep. He has the suit for soldiers. They've collected over 900 suits each year. And Christina has Christine's hair salon right there next to Joe. I'm good with both um, yep. <laughs> He's been there for several years and um, Shirley reached out to some businesses so that they would have enough people to start meeting again. So I would move that we approve both of these appointments so that they can meet because I believe they're meeting tomorrow night, right, Christine? That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah that's correct. And um, yeah. I did scan those in and email to everyone. So if you do have those in your email, if you and it does uh, give a little bio. Well, I'll, I'll move to approve. Okay, so it's a first by Ms. Fitzpatrick, second by uh, Mr. Brown. Yes. To appoint Christina DeSanti and Joseph Chaska to the Delanco um, Economic Advisory Council. And the term, their, their terms are what, three years, five three year, years? Three year terms and, and into those vacancies. All right, good. Uh, is that a roll call or all in favor? Uh, you should do a roll, roll call. Roll there. call, please. Sure. Uh, Ms. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Absolutely yes. Mr. Templeton. <laughs> yes. Yes. Very good. New blood. Yep. Anything else, Mrs. Lord? I have one more piece of correspondence. It is from the um, Burlington County Community Development uh, Office, just acknowledging that they are through their uh, public hearings for our CDGB grant application for um, uh, ADA compliant handicap ramps and sidewalk replacement and miscellaneous drainage improvements allocation 75,000 and our application is moving forward. Um, so it just lets us know that we are through the public hearing process and uh, the next step is just approval by HUD and that um, no, uh, contracts may be awarded or work started until we get that final HUD approval. 
And that's it for correspondence, Mayor. Very good. Uh, discussion items. Uh, I asked for the Memorial Day to be put back on discussion. Uh, uh, this is our last uh, uh, chance to, as a group to talk about it. And uh, uh, Mrs. Lohr, I believe, forwarded that information to the chief and to recreation. And uh, uh, just want to try to get an idea of uh, what this is going to look like, what their participation looks like. And uh, um, as far as planning and, and anything else that needs to get wrapped up here as uh, uh, we're uh, here in the middle of the month. So is Mr. McFadden or Recreation, uh, Ms. Provenzano on the line that uh, as far as what their respondents uh, or what this is going to look like? I'm on the phone, Mike. It's Phil McFadden, 410 Maple. Hello. Thank you. Okay. Um, in reference to most of the schools are not going to be participating because they have not had the chance to get their bands together. Uh, so as far as band wise, we're still waiting on one school, which is the Lanco schools. And I'm not even sure if they're going to be able to, uh, attend. I know Del Ran alumni has canceled. Um, Trenton Pipes is canceled, and we have Burlington City and Aqua so far that have committed to be there. Uh, we do have a number of groups that are reaching out. Uh, we had the state police have two mounted police officers that are going to be attending. And, of course, like the usual fire companies, uh, the Warrior Riders will be there. Uh, we did acquire signage. Uh, unfortunately, with what the governor has announced today, we bought the signs that said mask up, spread out. And it looks like he's removing the mask requirements on the out and outside events. Okay. Other than that, uh, we should have a good parade. We should... Uh, be situated to where there should be no issues. Bill, it's uh, Jesse. I just have one question. I just want to confirm the parade route is going to be the same as it was in 2019. Where that is correct. Union, correct? No, nope. we're going to straight run from Larchmont to the gazebo. Okay. We're in Coke. All right. And just to let the committee know, that the uh, Brown County Bridge Commission has um, has uh, committed to their assistance like they do every other year. So they're gonna be providing a police officer and a message board um, the, week, the week of to give um, motorists warning. All right, one of, the, one of the things I just, uh, you know, as far as uh, our neighboring towns have all canceled and so forth, and, and we're having really the only ev uh, public event. Uh, and, uh, I've, I've heard some concerns on the, we might have a little, uh, some spillover or uh, uh, from our neighboring communities as far as uh, crowd issues. And so I, I but, would hope- But again, y'all, uh, sorry, Mike. Uh, but again, you also have to take into consideration the Lankos parades always on a Sunday, Beverly and Riverside's are always on a Monday. So we'd have the same amount of people attending that we would any other time. That, that was it. I just wanted to make that point yeah. out there. All right. I, 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 before I left, uh, I, like I said, I've been, uh, been out of state for, uh, for for some time now, and uh, before I left, and talking with people, and actually a couple couple officers, police officers, uh, uh, there was that that concern was expressed. So I'd, uh, that was one of the things I just wanted to, to bring up uh, as far as a consideration, and and uh, that we uh, I don't know what we can do to mitigate that, uh, but uh, it's it's it will be what it will be. So. Uh, any other questions or comments of Mr. McFadden or the chief or uh, regarding uh, the Memorial Day? Mayor, we have um, uh, just a question in the chat from Peter Fritz. Fritz. 
says, can the signs be retrofitted with printed stickers? You were cut out, Janice. Say uh, that again. So I, uh, we have a question in the chat function, and it's from Peter Fritz asking, can the signs be retrofitted with printed stickers? But to show that there's no mask required? I mean, what, what does he want it retrofitted no. for? I, yeah. Well, it's, 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 oh, sorry about that. Um, as far as the signs, we have the signs. We're going to put the signs out because it does say space out, spread out. So whether they abide by the mask rule or not, if they feel comfortable to wear a mask, most people will. If they don't feel comfortable and want not want to wear a mask, they won't. We, we technically can't enforce it, but right. we can put them out there anyhow. What, what is the- I think, um, that's, no, what I think is, that's going to be the, you know, what's going forward. I mean, I'm, I'm out, here, out here in Arizona and uh, they're one of the no mask mandate uh, states. And uh, people, a lot of people are still wearing masks and a lot of businesses still have, uh, are, are posted on the front door, mask required upon entry. Uh, but uh, I, I think it's uh, your personal assessment of uh, health and risk and your family members and your personal uh, physical well-being. So uh, it's, it's a personal decision and consideration of those around you. So uh, I think that's uh, going forward, that's, uh, individually and as a community, what our uh, guidance is going to be. And what is the governor's executive order for outdoor uh, mask wearing where you cannot social distance when there are, you know, more, the more crowded areas? I haven't seen anything uh, from the governor's staff that's come down yet. Usually, usually they're a little, they're a day or two or, or three behind. And when there's an announcement, it, it shows up on Channel 6 Action News. But, and then about two, three days later, it shows up uh, in an email as the uh, executive order. I think Phil received it. Didn't you, Phil, receive that there's no mask required for outdoor events? It's, uh, I didn't, he, I didn't, yes, I did receive that. And, but I did not, I, listen to the whole thing it just said uh effective today immediately no mask required when was that, Phil? outside that was when he did his announcement this afternoon at like one o'clock okay. i believe because the one that came in last week which was supposed to be effective on the ninth, the 19th yep. basically it, it, said um we, you know the outdoor guy gatherings are still required to remain six feet apart and um, mask wearing will remain in place. That was last week, but you're saying today. Yes. It's a day, days, uh, today's report from the governor's mm -hmm. office said mask And that's for vaccinated outside. and unvaccinated? That's the way, the way I, I unfortunately I can't honestly answer right. that yes or no. I didn't get to watch the whole thing. I was only forwarded a picture of his background picture that said no mask required. Well, outside. Uh, we'll look, keep a lookout for the the official document, the executive order, and uh, disseminate that when that comes down. So uh, there's not much point in going back and forth on what the rules are now. Uh, we got two weeks. I'm sure it's going to change several times. So we get to that point. So uh, we'll uh, try to get the most accurate information, official information out. Uh, I, I have two comments. Receive it. Two comments. Go ahead, John. Okay. Uh, this weekend, my uh, granddaughter played in a huge uh, softball tournament in Medford. There were eight fields. I saw uh, one of our Delanco teams playing with Chris Teat. It was really nice, well represented. But there had to be. 600 people out there nobody wore a mask not the kids not the parents uh and nobody was obeying six feet rules so uh, you know let's not beat a dead horse it's gonna people are gonna act how they want to act okay they're coming out of this pandemic like i stated uh, two weeks ago if they feel threatened then don't come to the parade number two are we going to um 
say no to throwing candy. I think that's a little unsanitary at this point this year. Has that been discussed or decided upon? Yes, we have. We had a discussion at our meeting on Thursday night. Currently, we in the conversation was should we or shouldn't we? But the fact that everybody was allowed to go trick or treating, we felt that no different than throwing candy out. Now, as far as vendors, again, they'll be registering with the police department. The only requirement that we were putting out there for the vendors is the gentleman that shows up and sells the pretzels and waters. The pretzels must be pre-wrapped. And that's I mean, where we stood at that point. Can, can I make a, uh, just a comment about the throwing the candy? Um, yes. The, the only concern I have about throwing the candy is if it lands short and then you have someone running or going into the street to get that candy and not paying attention. So my, that's my concern every year. Uh, Jeff had brought that up, I guess, a couple of years ago. And I actually never really thought about it until they brought it up. That's something the Joint Insurance Fund recommends that if you don't permit it for that very reason, you may have a, a youngster sees the candy, wants to go and grab it and not paying attention to what's coming behind them in the parade. So I just, something that just doesn't apply to the pandemic, but would apply to any parade, so. Have we I, ever I, had an I, incident? Have we ever had an incident where somebody ran out and- I No, mean, we have not, and, but apparently okay. someone has for them yeah. to mention, so. Yeah, okay. I, I think the candy throwing is is not appropriate uh, at a parade. I, I especially don't think it's appropriate at, at a Memorial Day parade. Uh, it, I think it's disrespectful to the day. And uh, so, even, so would you and, like to reach out and, to Mr. Troy Singleton and tell him that it's disrespectful to throw candy because he's one of the gentlemen that reached out and wants to do it? Well, I'll, ta I'll talk to uh, the senator. So, but I, I, uh, uh, so, I think so do I later. assume, so do I, I assume Township's going to override the Recreation Commission? on what they determined that they wanted to do? No. What was that comment? I said, do I assume that township committee is gonna override the recreation commission on what they decided to do? Well, that's always how it works. Wait, on the candy issue? Yes. No. Oh. We're not arguing it, Phil. We're just questioning. We so you guys made a decision um, to allow it, and you made a good point about the trick or treat. I didn't even take that into consideration. But. Well, the trick or treating had had quite a lot of uh, restrictions, and people, uh, 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 many people, decided to opt out of that. And so, uh, I, I, I just, uh, I, this is not a good idea on several grounds, on several points, and. Uh, I, I, I would like to see the uh, that decision reversed or um, certainly discouraged. I, I don't agree with that. So do Sounds we have like to take a vote? Order. Do we have to take a vote? Or because I don't think we should override the Recreation Commission's decision. I think that Phil yeah. uses good judgment. He. Troy Singleton was probably one of the first who said he'd be in our parade and he said he would be throwing candy. He's a well-respected senator in our, our state. And I mean, and well, I think the Recreation Commission is, I, I, I missed their meeting, unfortunately, but I, I don't think we should override them. Well, I, yeah, that's just okay. my opinion. Do we feel that we need to, um take a committee vote on this or I, I just, it just seemed it would be common sense uh, given the, the pandemic and, you know, someone taking candy in their hands and tossing it out to bouncing across the street into a young child's hands. I mean, it just, uh, uh, that just seems reckless. And uh, uh, the safety consideration, which is always had, you know, a lump in my throat when I see kids darting in front of you know, vehicles and trucks and everything else, uh, even people walking. 
Um, it's it's just uh, creating. Uh, there's just several several points here. So uh, do we feel that we need to uh, take a position on this or? No, I don't. I think that uh, we're into this uh, parade this year. You know, uh, decisions have already been made. Uh, the candy issue, the chief brought up uh, the point as far as GIF is concerned. Uh, I think maybe we do a little bit, uh, some homeworks because we're gonna do this parade again next year, but uh, do the homework. You know, maybe there's a better way to distribute the candy if folks want to give out candy or give out goodies to uh, folks along the parade. Uh, you know. Phil McFadden, I, really, I I just don't understand because again, if you don't want your child to go out and get the candy, you won't send them. Just like if you don't want your child to go trick or treating, you you won't send them. So. I, I'm not sure why this is such a hard situation that it's coming down to this. I, I just don't understand. I, I really, I understand. You, do you think we want to put the residents and the children at risk? No, that's not our, go our ultimate goal. It's to provide some kind of normalcy back to the state of New Jersey and our town, Delanco. I just, I'm just amazed that we're, we're even having this discussion. No, my point was it was something That's for you to think about in the future. I mean, I didn't know something was brought to me by Jeff and I'm just sharing it with you. I don't know if that was ever considered when you guys discussed it. So in the future, if you could just bring that point up uh, when you guys make your decision year to year, that's all. I appreciate it. Chief, uh, not with, uh, without getting into uh, any type of specific, uh, I guess, backup from for the police department, but if we get into larger crowds, uh, is that handled through you and central dispatch? Or is that something you have to reach out to uh, the adjoining police departments in advance? Or, well, we're going to have to ask, well, I mean, you know, we don't know until, until we see what kind of crowds we get. And it's going to be mutual aid because we have every available officer maintaining traffic control, you know, to keep vehicles from driving in, into or through the parade. So, um, you know, we depend on mutual aid to assist one officer to answer calls to service during parade. Um, so if, if there's additional crowds, we're just going to you know, hope they abide by the, uh, you know, the barricades and so forth and, and, you know, do as we normally do. Um, yeah, the officers always do a great job with the parade, you know, but in light of the possibility of more folks coming in. Just, well, I think the, you know, question yeah, the, the impact that's going to be with extra folks coming in is that uh, the amount of traffic coming into town and looking for parking spots, that's, I think that's the only downside if there is an influx of people who come to our parade who do, do not normally come to our parade. And uh, I can guarantee you there's going to be some people who get stranded and never see the parade because they wait to the last minute and we start shutting down roads. And once we start down roads, there's only two ways in and out of this town. And, um, and you know, they're not going to they're not going to be able to get in or get out. I mean, I, that happens every year to one or two people where they come late and once we shut it down, Perkins Lane, no one gets through. And once we shut it down at, uh, at uh, Burlington Avenue of Vine, you know, no one gets through. So, I mean, there might be, you know, like some unhappy people that they can't see the parade, but um, my only concern would be parking because we eliminate parking for the parade route as it is. So, you know, there might be some complaints and issues of double parking and so forth that we might have to deal with. Um, the people being there, um, don't find that a big concern. 
Um, obviously, I'll just say it just so it's it's known. You know, the police departments are not going to be enforcing or monitoring distance face uh, mask wearing. Uh, we we don't have the manpower to do that. So you know, I just assume that there's no expectation that we'd be handling that. Um, so uh, that's that's where I think the biggest impact would be if we have an influx of people who never come before is is the uh, getting into the town uh, prior to the parade or just as the parade starting and, and parking, finding parking. Thank you. Phil, on uh, the parking, are folks allowed to use the school parking lot or the, where the library is at uh, Pearson? I, that would some, be something that school board would have to answer and yeah, I would think that's a school's decision we I've when we've had Babe Ruth Day I've had discussions with them about that and they've you know the last one we had they gave us permission to utilize that area but you know that I know year to year things change and policies change so I don't know if that's something that they would um, be willing to permit The only thing I could recommend is that I could reach out to the school in the morning. Okay. Again, to the chief's point, you know, if folks arrive early, they'll probably find parking or some parking. Uh, you know, if they arrive after one o'clock or a few minutes before one o'clock, they're not, not going to be able to get into town. So, uh, and they won't be able to use the school parking lot at all. Uh, Correct. The parade route going down Burlington Avenue. Okay. Well, if we, thank we you. close Burlington Avenue at uh, Perkins Lane, like I think. So. Ten, usually 10 minutes of one. Yeah. yeah. To, to let them line up. So that's when the, the you know, the, the bottleneck happens uh, where we start turning people around. People coming from Riverside have a little more time because we don't close that down right away. We wait till uh, we get to about um, I would say Oakford, then we shut down uh, Burlington Avenue and force them uh, down Vine Street. And then when we get to, uh, when we get to the um, traffic light, then we shut it down altogether, have the Bridge Commission shut it down on the Riverside side. Some people walk across the bridge for the parade. I've seen right. that. All right, let's uh, wrap this up. Uh, and uh, I would ask that the rec commission reconsider the uh, uh, tossing of uh, candy over the next two weeks or so, given what uh, we've discussed tonight. So we'll close this, uh, this discussion on the Memorial Day Parade and uh, anything else before we... Uh, I just saw that email come up from the governor, Mike. I just saw that email come up from the governor. Governor, no mask required outside. I just, I know, I saw you did. So it just yeah. uh, hit my mailbox. So everyone's got it. Yep. All right. Uh, resolution for executive session, please. So moved. Uh, it'll be re resolution 2021 71 for executive session. Um, that Mr. Erlett, motion yeah. by Mr. Erlett. Yes. Second. Second. All right, second by Ms. Fitzpatrick. And uh, we'll draw, go into executive session as required. We'll come back in the public session. I don't believe we'll be taking any action, but that may Just change. Just all in favor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. We got everyone. All right, uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I didn't thank you all. All right. Good night, everybody. Take Good care night, everybody. Well. Everybody have a good night. You too, Aaron. Thank, thank you. you. Too, Aaron. All right. Well done.